Hi everyone, Greg Phillips here. I wanted to take a few minutes to present the Deneb cheat sheet I recently prepared and that has been made available to all as a free resource by Enterprise DNA. Uh, as Deneb is code-based, familiarity is a good thing. And I wanted to document a number of the common syntaxes, both for the use of others, as well as for my own use, as I want to be prepared in case my own use of Deneb becomes less in the future and my memory wanes. So here's the cheat sheet. So what is the Deneb cheat sheet? Uh, the Deneb cheat sheet is a reference containing several common code samples to help uh, achieve specific ob objectives, such as sorting, conditional formatting, layering, and many more. Uh, next, where can I get the Deneb cheat sheet? Uh, the Deneb cheat sheet is available as a free resource from Enterprise DNA. Simply browse to the Enterprise DNA website, uh, sign up if necessary, uh, then click the downloads link in the resource center section of the navigator, and then scroll to the Deneb cheat sheet listing and click the download button. Now let's just have a quick look. Flip over to edge here, um, come down the navigator, third item is resource center, then deep downloads. Scroll down to the bottom and there's the Deneb sheet, cheat sheet. Click the download button. Okay, let's move on to the next. Uh, before we get started in order, uh, I just want to actually present the last item on the first page first, uh, namely the setting of the JSON editor font size. Uh, once you're editing a Deneb visual, uh, you can expand the editor card in the visual section of the visualizations pane, and there you can select the desired font size for your JSON code uh, from the drop down list. Uh, note that the chosen font size is sticky. Uh, in that once it uh, is set, it will remain a characteristic of the current visual. Uh, when creating a new De Deneb visual, uh, the font size is 10 point by default. Let's just flip over to Power BI and we'll have a look here. We'll come to this one and open up Deneb here. We open up the fields pane. We'll see here under formatting, editor. Uh, have can change the size of the code in our um, editor, our visual editor there as we see fit. Uh, a Deneb specification can consist of many blocks, but must include the data, mark, and include encoding blocks. Uh, let's have just flip over to Power BI and we'll have a quick look. Uh, so here we'll edit this visual again, and we can see that we have a data block mark block and the encoding block let's move on to the next uh, while a native power bi visual often makes some time saving default choices uh, and as well has a user interface for adjusting uh, the sort uh, one has to adjust the sorting specifically in the net specification uh, fortunately this is easy easily accomplished by adding a sort block to the axis of interest uh, in this example uh, a sort block has been added to the Y encoding channel. Let's just flip over to Power BI and we will have a look, uh, edit the net visual. And here we see the sort block that's been added to the Y encoding. Uh, the operation is sum. The field that we're working on is total sales. And the order that we're going to do the sorting is descending. Uh, to use Power BI format strings to adjust the presentation of access or data label values, uh, we use the format type equals PBI format uh, in Deneb. Uh, in this example, an access block has been added to the X encoding channel. Let's flip over to Power BI and we will have a look here and we see that we have an access block within the X encoding channel. And if we take that out, uh, we can see, oops, sorry, let me move this out of the way. You can see that the values are uh, as presented as normally. If we want them formatted, we just undo what we just did. Then format it again, and there we go. We see our values have changed. Okay, let's move on to the next section. Uh, to enable the standard or default Power BI tooltips, add a tooltip property to the mark block and set it to true. Uh, to use custom tooltips, in addition to enabling tooltips in the mark block, add a tooltip block to the encoding channel. Let's just flip over to Power BI and we'll have a look. 
So here I'm going to edit the specification and I see here that I have uh, the mark block story has been uh, designated with tooltip equal true. And in the encoding block, I'll just collapse these other sections here so we can see it a little bit more easily. I have added a, an array for a tooltip uh, block as well with country, channel, and total sales. Here's the tooltips. Now when I hover over, I will see I have my custom tooltip. Great. Let's move on to the next section. Uh, layers are probably something that will be used very often in Deneb uh, to create a visual using multiple overlapping marks and uh, create a layer consisting of an array of specifications, one for each mark. Let's just flip over to Power BI and we'll have a look. So here we have uh, uh, layered uh, bar charts using standard encoding. Let's just bump up the font size here. So what we have is a layer block and within the layer block, we have two specifications. Each specification is for a bar mark. In this case, and because it's a layer, they're mounted on top of each other, or sorry, displayed on top of each other. If we want to uh, share some encoding between different uh, marks, uh, all we need to do is, uh, sorry, once again, is move the relevant sections of the uh, encoding block outside the layer block. So in this case, we've taken the Y axis and, sorry, the Y axis block, and we've moved it outside the layer block. So here it is now, and we can see that we have removed the Y encoding from the first specification, and we've also removed it from the second specification. Okay, that's it. Uh, let's move on to the next section. Uh, to set the opacity for all instances of a mark, uh, add an opacity property to the mark channel and set its value as desired. Uh, to make the Deneb visual display cross highlighting like a native Power BI visual, uh, add an opacity block to the encoding channel. Let's just flip over to Power BI and we'll have a look. So if we edit this uh, specification, or sorry, edit this visual here, we'll see that we have an opacity block added to uh, the bar mark uh, here, and that will be reflected on all instances there. If we uh, come, to, whoops, sorry. Yeah, if I collapse on this one here on the highlight, we do actually see that we have an opacity block in the encoding channel here. Uh, and we can see that when we click one here, we can also, uh, sorry, we can see the highlight, everything else except what is selected is highlighted. And we can click multiple ones, uh, the same as in Power BI. Okay, let's move on to the next section. Uh, Deneb Visual can display an inherit title uh, that opens up the possibility of a wide, wide range of formatting options. Uh, to add a title to a Deneb Visual, Add a title block, uh, adjusting its properties as desired. Our example shows a few. Let's flip over to Power BI. And here we see uh, we have a title displayed. Uh, what we have here is a title block by itself. Let's send this if we want to add, for example, font size property. and show that we can change the size of the title. Great. Uh, other properties to change include color, font size, font style, font weight, etc. cetera. Uh, you can browse the Vega uh, Lite website uh, for a full list. Uh, to create an input widget uh, on the screen, uh, thereby adding interactivity to your Neb visual, add a parameter to the parameters block and bind it to an external input. Let's just flip over to Power BI and we'll have a look at a few. So here we have uh, five different uh, types of widgets that can be displayed. Uh, we can get a drop down list for interpolation here. So if I choose um, the interpolate uh, method here, I can adjust the display. Uh, 
for some of them. I think Cardinal is one. Uh, you can have the attention of the line respond to it. And this is a linear, um, a linear widget. Uh, you can also use a radio button widgets. If I want to change the axis text colors, I can change them to X or sorry, to blue, to black, to red, whatever I want. Um, I can use a single checkbox as well if I want to turn something on or off. Here I'm toggling on and off the gray background color. And finally, uh, I can use uh, any custom text I want. And it will be displayed. Let's just have a quick look at that. I'll edit this visual here, and we'll see that I have a uh, parameter. Oh, whoops, sorry. I missed it for each one of them. Uh, this is the um, interpolate parameter. Now this is the tension parameter. This is the uh, text color parameter for radio buttons. And this is a checkbox parameter. And this is the title text parameter. And then when I want to go and use these, I can just use them in expressions or I can use them in uh, properties. Perfect. Okay, we'll move on to the next section. Uh, to create a JSON template from an existing Zineb visual, uh, edit the visual and click on the Generate JSON Template icon button, uh, a document with an arrow. And in the Zineb Visual Editor pane, uh, you'll be presented with a dialog where you can enhance the template before its creation. There you can set uh, basic information about the template, its name, description, and author name. Um, adjust the names of the fields that will be presented to template users. And copy the generated template to the clipboard so it can be pasted into a new file. Uh, let's just flip over to Power BI and have a quick look. So here I come to edit the specification. Um, I come up here to the generate JSON template button here. I'm given the option of adding some text, changing some description values, and I see my generated template there. I can do control A, control C to see everything. And I can paste that in there. Uh, let's save, save it with a JSON extension. Now that it's there, I can come back and I can use it if I want so to create a new visual. So let's create a new one here. Come over to the visualizations pane, uh, create a new Deneb visual. Uh, Got to add a few fields into that. So before I can do anything, so let's just take ring one, two, and three percent. Oops, I guess we need to put them there. Sorry. Now, when I go to edit the specification, um, one of the options here is import from template. I click that, select JSON template, and I browse to uh, the, the file that I just created, which is test.json here. And if the fields match, I just work, or sorry, it just works easily. And there's my visual. It's created. Perfect. Okay, let's move on to the next section. Uh, to create link charts in Deneb, uh, you need a primary and a secondary visual. Uh, for this example, we've used two identical area charts. Let's flip over to Power BI and have a look. So here we have um, our single Deneb visual showing two separate uh, area charts. I'm going to edit the specification here. And what I have is a vertical concatenation block with those two specifications in it. Then the first one, I'm going to be uh, adding a selection brush here that picks up the X values. And in the second specification, I'm going to be adding a transformation onto it to filter the display to what's selected in the first parameter. So here we see I create a parameter here or sorry, I, I create a brush here and it filters the bottom visual. Okay, let's move on to the next section. Uh, to extend a data set with derived fields uh, for use in a Deneb visual, uh, add a transform block 
uh, within the block, you can add a new field to the data set using the calculate as transform. Let's flip over to Power BI and have a look. So here we go. I'll edit the ring chair here. And I see I have a transform block with uh, three new fields that have been added into the data set or I'm providing uh, percent values. And here I'm converting those per percent values to radians uh, by using standard math. Uh, to refer to an existing data set field, um, use the um, datum square bracket, single quote, field name, single quote, square bracket format. Uh, you can also use the datum dot field name uh, format, but this can only be used if there are no spaces in the, in the uh, field name. Uh, many other transformations are available, including aggregate, filter, flatten, fold, etc. And the, the uh, Vegalite documentation uh, goes into those. Uh, to enhance and attempt visual, uh, add a parameters block and set the name value pairs or the name expression pairs as desired. Let's just flip over to Power BI here and we can see in uh, the same specification here that I have uh, name value pairs. I have three of them set here. Um, there's a few more name value pairs. And then I can come down here. Here's a name expression pair where I can do a calculation. Here's another one here. And then when I want to go and use them, I can use them um, easily uh, for mark properties and wherever else I might need to, to need to or want to use more encoding properties. Okay, that's it. Let's move on to the next section. Uh, to use a specific named color, uh, use its name directly. And let's flip over to Power BI and have a quick look. So come to the named colors uh, visual. We'll come here and we'll see that I've used the color name of light blue. Uh, to use a specific color scheme that's built into Vega Light, uh, use the desired name of the Vega Light color scheme directly. Let's just flip over to Power BI again. Uh, and here we have a uh, separate specification here. And what we're doing is we're using a specific scheme for the color. There's a variety of these values um, that are defined in the Vega uh, and Vega Lite documentation, category B, set one, set two, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, to use a specific Power BI theme color, use the PBI color uh, index syntax and adjust the theme index, which is zero based, so theme color minus one, uh, as desired. Let's just flip over to Power BI and we'll have a look. So here, let's edit the specification. And here we see that the value that I've given for the color is the fourth, um, enter, or sorry, it's the number four, which is the fifth color that's in our color palette of our, of our Power BI theme. Uh, for gradient colors, uh, there are four integrations with Power BI theme colors in Zneb namely PBI color nominal, uh, which matches the current Power BI theme colors, uh, PBI color ordinal, uh, which uses a ramp scale from the min to the, sorry, from the max to the min colors of the divergent colors in the current Power BI theme and excludes the mid color. Uh, PBI color linear uh, uses an interpolated gradient from the max and min colors of the divergent uh, colors of the current Power BI theme and excludes the mid color. Uh, PBI color divergent uses an interpolated gradient from the max and min colors of the divergent colors of the current Power BI theme and includes the mid color. Let's just have a quick look. Flip over to Power BI here, edit the specification, and we see that we're using the uh, color scheme of PBI color nominal, which will match the Power BI theme. Okay, great. Let's move on to the next section. Uh, to set the smoothing and tension of line chart, uh, add interplate and tension properties to the line mark and the, uh, sorry, to the line mark block. Now let's flip over to Power BI here. And we note as well that we saw this a little earlier on when we were talking about widgets. But anyway, uh, the part that I want to show here is you're adding interpolate property to the line and you're adding a tension property to the line. 
uh, to set the label format for a temporal axis, uh, you can just use the formatting uh, that's available uh, within, uh, I guess, like JavaScript format or D3 format. Name it. Uh, you can just change these values here as you see fit. Okay, so maybe I don't want the year in here. So I take that out, reformat it, and the year's gone. Okay, well, let's move on to the next section. Uh, to turn a bar chart into a column chart, uh, exchange the X and Y encoding. Let's just flip over to Power BI and have a look. So here I have a bar column chart. So let's come back. Uh, I'll reset this to uh, be a bar chart. All I need to do for that is exchange the X and Y here. Reformat that. And there we go. Perfect. Uh, to round bar corners, uh, add to the bar mark, um, corner radius property. So let's just have a look here. And here I see the corner radius as it set to 25. I can set it to five. Refresh and that changes things. Let's set these numbers as desired. Uh, to turn a bar chart into a stacked bar chart, uh, simply add a color block to the encoding channel or sorry, to the encoding block. Let's just flip over to Power BI here. I'll have a look here. And you can see that I now have channel in the um, field well for this visual here. And all I've done is I've used it in a color block here. Let's just take this out for the fun of it. And we can see we have no uh, stacks at the moment. And if I add it back in, Uh, to turn a stack bar chart into a 100% stack bar chart, uh, add to, uh, sorry, a stack normalize property into the Y encoding block. And let's just flip over Power BI. We'll have a look here. And all I really need to do is add this here. So let's just take this out. And you can see we have a normal uh, chart here. If I add it back in, Then we have the normalized chart. Okay, let's move on to the next section. Uh, to set the size or the outer radius of a pie chart, uh, add radius or outer radius property to the arc mark. Uh, to turn a pie chart into a donut chart, uh, add a radius to or inner radius property to the arc mark uh, block. Let's just have a quick look. Let's flip over to Power BI here and we'll edit this pie chart. Here, if we want to change the size of the uh, pi. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the pi. So, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on auto apply here so we can see it in real time. Perfect. And if I want to change the, the, sorry, make the pie chart into a donut chart, I just have to add an inner radius property. I've set the value as zero here so that we can see um, the, sorry, that I can see it as a, as a pie chart. If the inner radius is zero. And so here, if I set one 80 or something like that, that gives me my, whoops, sorry, extra zero. All right, so there you go. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Uh, to set the start and end of an arc segment uh, in radians, uh, zero equals north or up, uh, use the theta and theta two properties. Let's flip over to Power BI here, and we'll edit this visual here. And what I see is I have a few calculations that simply do a percent, or sorry, a percentage calculation and a radians calculation. And then when I want to uh, use uh, the values here, I simply add values for radius, radius two, theta, and theta two. So when I want my um, opaque background, from a background mark, it doesn't need to be one of the fields, it just be hard coded values. When I want um, the value to be reflective of the percentage I put in, then I want to use the a calculated radiance value. Great, let's move on to the next section. Uh, there are four different types of composite views in Deneb uh, layering, uh, which is a set of overlapping specifications. Uh, this was described more in more detail on the general uh, section. Um, concatenation, 
a set of specifications concatenating vertically, be concat, horizontally, each concat, or so they just, or so they wrap, uh, regular concat. Uh, fastening, uh, a set of repeating marks, each with a subset of the data, kind of like small multiples using common specification. Uh, repeating, uh, a set of repeating marks, each with the full data set using common specification. So you can think of it like large multiples or full multiples. Uh, let's look at each in turn. I'll flip over to Power BI here with the layer. Uh, as we saw earlier, we have two um, marks on top of one another. So let's just come down here to layer, sorry. And I'll collapse the two specifications. So here we have two different specifications within the layer mark as an array. And the first uh, specification, we can do whatever we want here. And in the second specification, once again, we can do whatever we want, set colors, values, etc. cetera. Uh, for concat concatenation, let's open uh, this specification here. And we can see that we have a very similar layout. We have two specifications with an H concat array. And if I want to change those to be vertical, all I gotta do is change that to a V. And there we go. Change that back to an H. Perfect. Uh, let's move on to fasting, um, like small multiples here. Let's edit this. And we can see uh, that we have a facet definition uh, within the encoding channel. Uh, note that fasting doesn't work in an encoding channel for layers. Uh, it's often an issue when converting a single view to a layered view uh, with facets in them. Uh, so there's an alternate syntax, which we'll look at next. Uh, so we come over here, we'll open this, and let's edit the web visual here. And this alter, alternate spec, specific, sorry, alternate syntax, uh, we find a definition for the facet and what field it's going to use uh, to make the small multiples. And then there's a specification here, which def def defines each of the things. So in this instance, we have uh, a bar chart uh, developed, or sorry, designated for uh, each of the separate origin social we'll produce three here. Uh, repeat, uh, this is very similar to the alternate facet syntax we just looked at, uh, except of course, we use the full data set each time. Uh, so if you wanna think of facet like small multiples, then you can think of repeat as large multiples or full multiples. Let's just have a quick look here. Let's head at the specification. And here we see I've designated my uh, fields here that I'm going to have in my repeat. I specified how many columns I want, and I have a specification here for each of them. And I have this If I had a third field in here, for example, click that, and I get a third one. That just showed up here because I only had two columns. If I had three, then it would show up this side. Perfect. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next section. Uh, conditions. Uh, to conditionally set the value of a property, uh, you can use the existing uh, name square bracket dash or sorry, apostrophe, field name, apostrophe, square bracket, uh, syntax, or you can use the datum dot, datum dot field name syntax, uh, only if there are no spaces in the field name. I use the first all the time. Um, let's just have a look in Power BI and see where this is used. So let's come over and we'll look at the temperature gauge here. Uh, collapse the transform block and the params blocks. We don't need them right now. We'll collapse the border and the gauge border, sorry, and look at the bulb fill. And here what we have is our conditional color block. So we're using uh, a test. If the temperature is less than uh, minus 20, use a particular color. If the test is less than, sorry, if the temperature is less than five, use a different color. If the temperature is less than 25, use a different color, otherwise, use a fourth color. And we can see that that works. 
here if I change these marks here. Okay. Uh, to set the color of a mark based on a parameter, uh, you can add a parameter into your uh, uh, specification and you can then use that parameter. Let's just flip over Power BI and we'll have a look here. So what I have is I have a parameter that's set to make a selection and then I'm going to use that parameter um, as a condition in my color here. So if I click here, we can see I do want the full color in what I selected. I want everything else to turn gray. Uh, to set the size of a mark based on mouth selection, I, again, you can add a um, parameter, a paintbrush parameter, and you can set its value and use its value. So let's just have a look. So here I have a parameter where I'm making, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I've set a parameter for the paint brush uh, size on mouse over. And we can see as I mouse over the various things here, I'm not clicking anything. I'm just moving the mouse. Here is changing both the size and the color of the point. And I come down to here and here's where I'm setting uh, the size based on the value that's in the paintbrush. And here I'm setting the color based on the value that's in the paintbrush. Okay, let's move on to the next section. To add an if then else calculation, uh, use the if test, uh, then value, uh, else value form. In many programming languages is also known as the conditional or ternary operator form. Uh, let's just have a quick look. Flip over to Power BI and I'll let the specification. And what we can see is I have a um, expression to calculate the color uh, to be displayed here. And I have a test here. Here's my test. And if the test is true, I want this color. If the test is false, I want that color. So let's just change the value here and we'll see that everything turns green because they're all above uh, 1 million. So 1 million, yes but they're not all above 100 million. Let's make it 20 and see what comes up there. Sorry. Perfect. Okay, let's move on to the next section. Uh, to use a parameter, uh, add an expression block. And let's flip over to Power BI and we'll see that. Here, so let's edit the specification. And you can see I've defined a um, parameter here named my color, and then I've used it down here in my expression. If I want to change that to, for example, red, if I want to change it to green, then we can change that very easily. The advantage here is that can be used many times throughout your code. Uh, you define once you use many times. Let's move on to the next section. Uh, I don't have any additional notes about the Nebvigalite op object model uh, beyond what is shown on the cheat sheet. So let's just let that stand and we'll finish there. Uh, so that's the Neb cheat sheet. Uh, again, this PDF file is available as a free resource that can be downloaded from the resource center download section of the Enterprise DNA website. Uh, for more examples and templates of Deneb and Vegalite in action, uh, browse to the Deneb Showcase section of the Enterprise DNA Forum. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you found this informative and useful. Uh, good luck on your Deneb journey. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us, and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.